Hi, today I want to unpack my new toy. It's the NAF52840 Preview Development Kit and it's called Bluetooth 5 Ready for Development. And that's the reason why I bought this board from an electronic company, from Mausa to be precise. So today I want to unpack this and just want to compile my first program for the board and flash the new firmware and let's have a look on the LEDs so don't expect any Bluetooth 5 programs today it's just a first step to get ready for compiling new stuff for the sport so just some words about Bluetooth 5. It claims to be quadruple the range and double the speed and also increasing the data broadcasting capacity. So if you want to know what this means, you can look at the specification from Nordic, but there also, you know, it claims only that it's have a long range and high throughput capacity and no real numbers. I have also looked at the development kit, but there's no specification for the range and the real throughput. So, so maybe depends on your usage and environment. So let's open up the package and destroy the attention sticker. And we get a nice card from Nordic. Thank you for purchasing this product. And this is the board and the package is not empty. There's also a small NFC tech we can plug into the board so also with the Nordic logo but for today I just put it in the box so let's have a look we see the 5840 chip and the antenna is just a small PC trace. So let's have a look at closer look. It's just not a wiggling trace. It's just a straight trace. So what was we have the Sega JTEC programming chip and some DC to DC converter stuff, USB plug, and this is the NFC connector and the buttons, and a new output USB port, all the GPIO pins. Here we have the LEDs, and as you see, there's also GPIO ports called with one and we can just deconnect this protection plastic also it's protected yes we have a USB port for programming and a USB ports just for the chip. So what else? We have an CR2032 battery holder and also a battery. That's a nice touch. So and on the back side there's the big silk screen for all the buttons how to connect them and on what kind of GPIO port you find your buttons and the LEDs and the other nice pins. So also the external crystal. And also we find the Sega logo and ARM embed logo.
So let's start with the programming. So first we have to unpack our new SDK, the SDK number 13 and also we cannot use today open OCD. So I use the NAF J proc program from Nordic to program the board. So maybe in the future I show you some open OCD example, but not today. So first I unpack the command line tools to a new folder and then let's do some directory listing and let's have a look at the NAFJ proc program. I do a LDD so I can find all, ne all the needed libraries for this program, but it looks okay. Every single library is found. So let's do an LS USB so we can check if our board is connected to our operation system and we find the Sega is connected to our USB port. So let's start with some example. I just do a reset for the board. So I type NFJPROC and my chip. It's an type NRF52. And also I do a reset. And let's go. Okay, we have to write two minus signs. And now we have a problem. No, some library is not found from the Sega installation. So I have to write the LD library pass and export the variable. So I don't know. I'm not sure if I use this dollar sign or not. So I have to do it again, not with a dollar sign. Show the variable, it looks fine. But we have another problem. Our Sega is not really found by the NF proc program. So we first have to install the right UDEF rules for our Sega programmer. And we just copy the UDEF rules from the installation and just reload the rules and just trigger the UDEF device. And then we can have a look again in LSUSB. Our Sega is found. So hopefully now it's working. So no, I, I just do a unplug and plug it in again. And then let's start with a reset and Yes, it's working. That's fine. Wow. Okay, let's do again a reset. And the demo program on the board is start again. It's just fading in and fading out to the LED. So they have pre-programmed the chip on the development board. So let's start with Eclipse and write our first program, just a blinky program. Just do a reprogram of our chip. So start with a new project, just a C project with a cross compiler, the ARM cross compiler. And I call it blinky number 13. So it's for the SDK number 13, hopefully. That's a lucky release. So I just don't use the own make files, not the um, generated make files. And I also set the preprocessor command for the output. So this is this setting. And we just set the right compiler pattern. 
So let's go and start our program. Just check the right GNU compiler settings. So, okay, first I do a make.c and copy my Blinky example, not with the standard peripheral example. I just want to reduce the complexity of this code. So I see on the board we have the first LED is GPIO pin 13. And we have to check our common make file and enter the SDK 13. So let's do a compiling. If everything is compiled OK, I do a program. With the NAFJ proc tool, write program and then our hex file with the whole far path. So blinky number 13 dot hex and I also make a sector erase. And looks fine. So let's do a reset and let's have a look if our LED is blinking. And it works nice. So I do a, some improvement of our of my program. Just blink all four of the LEDs in the order with some delay. And we have four LEDs, so I make a small define. Just a crude example, but it works. So if we check our code, then just do a compile and it compiles OK. So just flash again and reset again. So let's look at our bench and our board and all LEDs are blinking just in a sequence. So one, two, three, four. That's just our small program. So that's a success. So next thing we can test is the battery. So I unplug the USB and just take out the plastic stopper to connect the battery. And let's have a look. There's nothing connected, so it works fine from the battery. And we also have a small on-off switch, so we can have a look at the on-off switch. So switch off and LEDs are off. And now we can switch on again and everything. That's it. So let's have a look at the product specification just for completeness. So we have um, a Bluetooth 5 ready chip and it's a 32-bit ARM Cortex-M4 processor with 64 megahertz. And we have tons of GPIO stuff and that's a quad um, SPI interface for external memory usage. And we have high speed, so it's 32 megahertz capable. And we have also a encryption coprocessor. And what's also nice, we don't limit it to 3.6 volt anymore. We can use up to 5.5 volt and it's maybe the USB port compatibility that's make this necessary. So this is the pin assignment for the chip. Don't came with a QFN package anymore. It's, it's just an BGA type with a big heatsink pad in the middle. And as we see, we don't have a limitation to 48 pins. I don't count them, but it's just about 70. And as we see here, we have also another port for the GPI open. So we are now port zero and also a port one with another GPI open assignment. And we can compare this with the 
52832 series. So just one one thing to mention. Um, now we have nearly 700 pages in the product specification. So just some stuff to read. So just a glimpse look at the content list for today. GPIO TE, task and events, also known from the start with the NF51 series, real-time clock, random number generator, and the encryption block, I2C, master and slave, UART, quadrature decoder, then hardware build, pulse width modulation, SBI interface, then Maybe this is interesting, ARM Trusted Zone Crypto Cell. And also don't forget to have a look in the Errata sheet. So there's tons of yet known errors in this chip, but that's okay. It's just a preview of what's coming next. And you can also start with your Bluetooth 5 tests and programming. So that's the thing for today and I hope you enjoy the video and maybe you learn something. So thanks for watching today and please give me a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel to support my work. And thank you. Bye bye. Have a nice day.